Okay, Christian, thank you for joining us today inside NCAT. Um, we're going to jump right into it. You have an amazing story. Something awesome just happened to you. Tell me about it. So let me tell you, um, Nick Cannon blessed me by giving me a full ride and just canceling all my student debts from North Carolina a and after I get my degree. He just blessed me on that. So that happened um, about two days ago. So it was it was a little a lot, like a month long process, but it was a great process as far as like getting my story out there and just telling my testimony because somebody's going through exactly what I went through when it came to going to A&T. So we have a little clip and we're going to show a little bit of that. This is courtesy of Mr. Cannon's um, show. Overcoming learning disabilities helped me accept who I am. The greatest day of my life. The day I learned I, I was accepted to North Carolina a &T. That was the day that I knew that I was going to be an influence to my younger brothers. And of course, I couldn't forget about my family on my iPhone over there. Uh, we, we, Christian, what's up? We, you good, man? What's going on with you, Nick? I'm doing well. How are you? Man, man, awesome, man. That that smile you got on is lighting up the whole studio. Now, um, you had a learning disability, and you overcame that when you were younger, and it inspired you to go on. And now here you are today, repping the HBCU in a big way. Talk about it, man. North Carolina a and Aggie Pride all the way to the outside, man. Um, I knew I had to overcome that learning disability if I was going to be able to carry on the legacy a great host and entertainer such as yourself. Nick Cannon surprised you or you and you know some some other HBCU students canceling your um, student debt. Right. I mean that would make me ecstatic. How do you feel? So this is more so about my mom than me because my brother is also in college and he goes to Winston Salem. He's a sophomore right now. So having two kids in college, having one kid in college is crazy. Having two kids in college is a whole nother ballpark. So. Being in college and, and being a first gen to be able to have my brother go to a HBCU, um, that's that was that was the best thing to me because I actually I'm gonna be honest, I had to take a semester off because we were both going to college at the same time, and especially during the pandemic, where with me losing my job and everything like that going on, I had to be able to take care of myself. So I had to let I had to make sure I said, okay, I've had my time at NCAT for for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself together so I can do for myself and let my brother go ahead and have that full experience that I had, especially in my my younger years in undergrad. So I definitely had to take that time off to do that. So being able to go back in the spring now and and just be able to finish out everything that I had to do is gonna be amazing. Like that just I just words can't even describe how that feels right now. Let's talk about. You know, you have a whole lot going on. You are, you, you're not just a student and you're not just a proud a t student. You are, um, you're a DJ, you are a radio, tele, television, radio, television personality. I mean, you, you get the crowd hype. You get the people hype. Tell me about your personality. Tell me about where this came from. So really where this came from was it started in church, right? So I went to my Peace Baptist Church back in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I used to be like the master of ceremony for my church. And also when I was a kid, before I got into doing like hosting, I used to do stage plays and I was I was doing modeling. So I've always been in entertainment, but I didn't really know my direction till the summer before I came to college. Um, Kind of when I got here to a and I needed some extra money. I'm be honest. So all my checks, part of my story is all my checks from McDonald's the summer before I get into college. Instead of saving that and putting that away because, you know, we need to have food and eat Ubers and everything like that because freshmen can't have, can't have cars. I decided to spend all that money and invest into the brand City County Mike, which I wasn't getting booked for yet. I didn't have any shows, any gigs, wasn't getting paid. I just knew I wanted to do something. I had a logo before I even had a flyer. I had I had a logo with nothing to put it on. So <laughs> that was me um, going in uh, going into college. And then I was also in band, right? So you know anybody that know the Blue and Gold Marching Machine, y'all know we practice from sun up to sun out. Shout out to Dr. Ruff. Um, I play euphonium, right? So we in band practice. We in band practice on top of me trying to build a brand, on top of me being in school, on top of me being broke. <laughs> so I was doing all of that freshman year at the time, but I knew all those things, especially band. Like band, I love being in the band. I love marching. But the things that I learned from band as far as dedication, hard work, um, loyalty is the real reason why I went back to band um, in Honda. When we did Honda recently in 2020, um, I took some time off band to kind of build my career. But I went back because of the principles, and I never, I felt like I needed to get grounded again. And then I ended up doing campus events at A&T. Um, and from campus events, I started doing campus events at other schools, and they were booking me elsewhere because they seen all the crazy videos from A&T because, you know, A&T go viral. And that led to me um, running and being nominated and winning the number one HBCU host award. I love it. I love to see um, students doing their thing. You know, you don't have to wait until you graduate right. to do your thing. What are you most passionate about? 
having watching people have a good time. That's really what I like to see. Like I love like at the football game when that seeing the generations still have that Aggie pride. That's one thing that we all share. Like it was this guy named Albert that was dancing on in, in the stands and stuff like that. And being able to be back after two years, that's that's crazy. Where are we going to see you in the next five to ten years? In the next five to ten years, um, hopefully I will have my own show. <laughs> so to be able to do um, similar things, um, my, my next initiative is to get back into the schools. Um, when I first graduated from high school, I was really heavy as far as coming back and just kind of advocating and things like that. So my next goal for right now is to bring the HBCU culture back to these high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools to be able to see those. Because the reason why I really came to A&T is because my band director, Clifton Scott, went to North Carolina A&T, and he was in band as well because I was originally going to I was gonna originally, um, edu- uh, major and mask and uh music education so um being able to see what he brought back to our schools and just kept showing us over and over again what the college culture looked like forced me to go so i want to be able to do that to these elementary schools middle schools and high schools and get it in their head early but in the next five to ten have my own talk show give away my own scholarships build a school um all of that that's that's what it really really what i'm trying to do is be able to give back to those single parent households those first gens those black young boys that are from the suburbs because everybody doesn't come from the top but everybody doesn't come from the bottom right. either there's their middle class as well so right much success to you and i know that you're going to do exactly what you said you're going to do yes, congratulations ma'am. again thank you so much